Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and welcome to episode 3 of the world's most ridiculous concourse preparation detail. And in today's video we're going to be bringing the performance blue paintwork back to life. If you are new to the channel then please consider subscribing and if you do feel that the video deserves a thumbs up for my huge amount of effort then feel free to smash the like button. The RS was washed and decontaminated in episode 1 and it received a 2 stage wet sand in episode 2. If you haven't watched those videos already then be sure to check them out. As you can see I have been busy, the focus is fully sanded back through the use of a Rupes Scorpio Mark III palm sander they're a 2 stage sanding process using 2000 and 3000 grit sanding pads. For an informative video about all things Rupes Scorpio and the sanding process that was given to the focus then please check out episode 2 of this series. The big question today is what compounding combination am I going to need to restore the 3000 grit sanding marks and the generally flatted down paintwork. I'm going to begin with testing the bonnet using a medium abrasive compound and a microfiber compounding pad just to see what these sanding marks are going to take to fully remove. A test area somewhere on the bonnet is going to let me know if this setup is abrasive enough or if I need to adjust to a heavier compound. As usual I will be using my Rupes Bigfoot LHR15 Mark II machine polisher with a FlexiPads 5 inch microfiber compounding pad. I've chosen the Rupes Green Medium compound to start with and I did quickly realise that although this combination would have eventually removed all sanding marks and finished down incredibly well, I would have been in for a far too time consuming initial compounding stage. The amount of compounding that was required to remove the sanding marks was creating far too much heat on the surface, so the risk of burning through was far greater. The term for this as written in the detailer's bible is known as destructive machine polishing. I need a compound with a bit more bite to it to cut down on the amount of machine polishing that's actually required. I swapped the medium compound for the heavy coarse one and carried on using the same microfiber pad. The only downside to using the heavy compound is that it will leave very noticeable heavy marring in the finish. I was hoping that I was only going to be in for a 3 stage machine polish although it's now become obvious that it will need a 4th stage. In short I'll be doing a heavy cut, medium cut, fine finish and an ultra fine finishing stage. This 6 stage restoration process in total inclusive of the 2 stage wet sand when fully complete is going to well and truly make the performance blue paintwork pop more than any other Focus RS Mark II on the road. The difference on the roof is pretty remarkable, compounded on the left and still wet sanded on the right. The car has gone from relatively well looking to the average person to begin with to a satin finish with the first stage of wet sanding and then almost went to a matte finish with the second. 
I'm now taking it from an almost matte finish to a navy blue. Not quite performance blue, but we are getting there. The bigger Rupes machine polisher was used for the more open panels and larger areas whereas the smaller mini Bigfoot was used to cut in the edges. Again using the same Rupes heavy coarse compound and a microfiber compounding pad, the tighter areas on the focus were brought back to life. Please bear in mind if the footage does go quiet all of a sudden then it is due to having the radio on in the unit which did help to keep me sane throughout this mammoth detail. You can clearly see that there is still a certain level of orange peel in the paintwork but like I did mention in episode 2, orange peel on Fords is pretty bad. I honestly didn't feel comfortable with taking the paintwork any further back than I actually did. If I'm being completely honest and I will show you footage towards the end of the video then I strongly feel that I have achieved around a 70% reduction in the orange peel. It's hugely noticeable in person and I do hope that it does come across well in the footage. It's not bad for my first attempt. Restoring the paintwork with this initial compounding stage gave me an absolutely amazing feeling. At this point I was well over 40 hours into the detail and I was finally starting to see some results. I was now able to imagine what the car will be like when it's finished which gave me some real motivation and confidence to get the job done. The difference is night and day and far better than it was before I started the detail. The key to restoring the sanding marks and to bring the finish back is simply going to be down to time spent with the machine polisher. Every last section of paintwork needs to be compounded for enough time otherwise they'll still be flatted down in faded sections present. You can hit one panel for 5 minutes or you can hit one panel for 30 minutes. My question to you is which one do you think will look better? We originally had the 2000 grit sanding marks which were then smoothed out with the 3000 grit sanding stage. We are now restoring the 3000 grit sanding marks with the heavy compounding stage which is also bringing the colour back to life. We will then need to smooth out these heavy compounding marks with a medium abrasive compounding stage. The fine polishing stage will then smooth out the medium compounding marks and finally the ultra fine polishing stage will smooth out any fine polishing marks. Each of these six stages needs to be done with absolute obsession, focus and with a huge amount of hard work and dedication. Each stage going forwards needs to remove the marring left behind from the previous stage so when we do finally come to our very last ultra fine polishing stage the finish is going to be absolutely flawless. This detail is by far the biggest detail that I've ever done by twice the amount of time. In the last episode of this series, I will give you a breakdown in terms of how much time went into each of the major stages. The detail has taken well over 200 hours by the time I've gotten around to putting this episode together. Compounding the tighter sections of the bodywork and all of the finicky curves on the car is simply a case of manoeuvring the machine into a position where it will comfortably spin. Generally speaking, then these dual action orbital machine polishes do like to sit completely flat against the paintwork and when they become tilted, they don't always like to spin at max RPM. Make sure you are hitting every area of paintwork and don't spend too much time on the edges. The Rupes machines need to be handled in a controlled manner so you really do need to take your time to compound each panel. Maintain a slow arm speed throughout and check your results as you go. 
Do as much as you can with a machine like the LHR15 which has a 5 inch backing plate and then swap over to one of the Rupez's more convenient offerings for hitting the tighter sections and smaller areas. After the bulk of the heavy compounding was done with the bigger Rupes Bigfoot machine, I swapped over to the Mini Bigfoot and tackled the tighter areas. I'm using a 3 inch FlexiPads microfiber cutting disc in the same Rupes heavy coarse compound. Once again I set about giving the smaller and slightly more intricate areas an incredibly good seeing too. Rupes as a company haven't made one machine to do one car, they've made a range of machines for you to do one car properly. Maximise the use of each machine for all suitable areas and what you should find is that these machines do perform at their best when used on the correct size body panel. The other machine is a Rupes hybrid for the real intricate areas although we'll get to that shortly. Make sure you brush out every pad frequently and this goes for both the compounding pads and the finishing pads. If they do become heavily clogged with product filled with dry compound or polished residue or if they generally become oversaturated due to using too much product then they won't perform anywhere near their best. Residue control plays a big part in successfully correcting paintwork so make sure you keep your pads well maintained. If you don't feel as if your pads are performing correctly then change them out to a fresh pad and start again. The side skirts on the RS certainly weren't missed out when it came to the wet sanding stages because like I said I'm doing it proper. Spend the time required to hit all areas and quite simply the longer you spend the better the finish will be. I'm aiming for concourse so it is taking quite a while. I did put some touch of paint on it, but I'm finding that all the touch of paint I put on whenever I compound over it, yeah, yeah it just comes off. So, oh god, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna count them all at the end, how many burn marks I've done. But I think before, um, just before I put the ceramic coat on, I'm just gonna have to touch everything up. Yeah, to, you know, three coats, the best that I can. Every last bit of sanded back paintwork, so practically everything that's blue, was given the heavy coarse compounding stage and it must have been one of the most satisfying things that I've ever done in detailing. Seeing the true colour of the RS coming back to life after spending over 40 hours on the detail was incredibly rewarding. Could you vacuum both sides? Hmm? Could you vacuum both sides? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Well, that'd be the side pretty crazy, but... uh, I um, Jeez, when I um, got them out, so obviously cleaned them the best that I could inside, and you couldn't really get them any cleaner, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. Got them out, and somehow, they're, they're fully fixed in, Got them out, and there's just like a thick layer of mud on the other side. Oh, really? And it's like, how is that? But it's made its way through over over the years, over ten years. The mud particles have made their way through the fabric and just settled on the other side. I bet this was uh, dirty now. Yeah, it was filth. You'll see on the video. I got some good um, before, like drawing photos, jet washing, loads of mud off. Yeah, some good footage from this so far. Pretty good footage. I'm trying to capture different angles. That's one thing. 
if you just shoot a video if it's just in one corner, yeah. it makes it obvious that like you've literally just put Yeah, you've hardly put any effort into it whatsoever. Whereas if you capture loads of different angles, yeah. showing all different things, it's obviously indicates more effort has actually gone into the production. Of course. So it makes it much more viewer, much better to watch, more entertaining. The Rupes LHR 15 Bigfoot and its 5 inch backing plate is far too big of a machine to compound areas like the front bumper. This is where the Rupes Mini Bigfoot earns its investment as it's absolutely perfect for compounding the front bumper. This smaller machine was used for various other areas on the car such as the rear bumper, underneath the side skirts, in and around the boot lid and all of the other hidden sections like underneath the front and rear bumpers. Within this detail I was setting records for total products used, time spent, effort required, patience required, polishing and compounding pads used and obliterated and was still only just about to finish the initial compounding stage. The medium compounding stage which will involve the Rupes Green Medium Compound and the same type of microfiber compounding pad is now going to smooth out those compounding marks from the heavy compounding stage. With the medium compounding stage we will see a noticeable improvement in the gloss levels due to smoothing out the paintwork even further and what else we want to see is those heavy compounding marks start to diminish. The medium compounding stage is going to take quite a bit of doing but not quite as time consuming as the heavy compounding stage. The hard part was restoring all of those sanding marks in the first place so there is a little less work to do with this medium stage. Each compounding stage will leave their own uniformed marring in the paintwork from the compound's abrasives. This marring needs to be removed with each following and less abrasive stage so when we do finally get to the last machine polishing stage there will be nothing to see but a flawless finish. Quite a lengthy process and I can assure you of that but at the end of the day this car is being prepared to show standard. In terms of the difference between the heavy compound stage and the medium compound stage, well I've already explained. Moving forwards with this medium stage and it is pretty much the same as the last. I'm refining the paintwork that little bit further but still whilst in the compounding category. The paintwork is certainly not looking navy blue anymore, in fact it's almost coming back to performance blue. In terms of the marring left behind from the medium stage then it is still pretty noticeable after an IPA wipe down but it's far less apparent than it was after the heavy compound stage. At long last, now that the bulk of the compounding has been finished, I can finally remove the last bits of the brown paper. All of the gloss black bits of trim that laid behind the paper are next to be compounded. Gloss black trim in general does tend to be far softer than the rest of the bodywork. Also, with it being black, it's far more prone to suffering from the same types of generic paint defects. If polished up correctly though, this gloss black trim is well and truly going to help the car to stand out. We have an absolute abundance of swirl marks and scratches and it all needs to be rectified. Most of the time, and this goes for 99% of the gloss black trim that I've paint corrected in the past, it's an absolute breeze. Once again, it's all about the contact time with the correctly selected compound and pad. It's also an incredibly satisfying stage to do, which is usually undertaken after the bulk of compounding for the main bodywork has been finished. Due to the surface of the gloss black paint naturally being marginally softer than the performance blue, I chose the Rupes Green Medium Compound and the FlexiPads 3 inch microfiber compounding pad. The machine in question is a Rupes Mini Bigfoot 75E Duetto and it does a wonderful job provided that it's in safe hands. Every piece of gloss black trim was treated using this technique including the front mouth section, as much of the spoiler that I could physically get to, the rear diffuser and the wing mirrors. They all took quite a bit of doing, but considering that they haven't been properly machine polished for quite a few years, they soon started to look absolutely amazing. The Mini Bigfoot was utilised across all gloss black areas and I could finally see the entire car coming back to life.
Shinemate EP803 intricate machine polishing tool was next to be deployed to sort out the real intricate areas. I'm not a huge fan of the Rupes hybrid and I do personally prefer this mini rotary machine. The long reach attachment is perfect for these hard to get to areas and it does make light work of removing the defects, providing you are using the more abrasive cone attachment in conjunction with a medium compact.
The only problem with this tool is that it doesn't like to finish down very well. I will follow this initial compounding stage which I am doing to solely remove the defects with a refining stage using a much softer polishing combination. But, elephant butt. Even with the softer polishing combination, you still have to be incredibly thorough and precise as to not leave any holograms behind. It is a good machine, but only when used in skilled hands. All areas that either the bigger Rupes machine or the mini Bigfoot machine couldn't get to are now going to be sorted with this handy bit of kit. The Rupes green compound for the compounding stage with the more abrasive cone attachment and the white Rupes ultra fine finishing polish and the soft polishing cone attachment for the finishing stage. This machine really does allow you to cover the finer details and I do enjoy using it providing that my time is being covered. Obviously this is my own vehicle so hopefully the YouTube ad revenue will make up for my ridiculous efforts. If you haven't dropped the video a like already then please give it a tickle now and if you are new to the channel then please consider subscribing. Now that the two stage compounding process has been initially finished and I do this with every car before moving to the refinement, I turn the lights off in the unit and inspect all areas of paintwork to make sure that there is no defects or missed areas left behind. I will go around the vehicle with a bit of 3M tape and mark any problematic areas. I will then grab the specific polishing tool to treat those areas and give them a bit more attention to make sure that all feasible defects are properly removed. A perfect opportunity to carry out this process before cleaning my hands of the compounding stage. Be sure to wipe the areas over with IPA and inspect for a second time to ensure complete defect removal. There were quite a few areas with either sanding marks or heavier compounding marks so I did spend a further 2 hours addressing every last visible mark on the bodywork. There were only a couple of marks on the lower doors that I wasn't able to improve and when the compounding pad started to turn blue I knew I had pushed the panel beyond its limits. The results at the end of the second stage of compounding would almost be good enough for a half blind detailer to seal in. There's no minimal marring in the paintwork, but we haven't even started the refinement process so there is still far more gloss to be had from the Performance Blue Focus RS. It isn't shown very well in the footage, but there is still a very fine covering of light compounding marks across the entire bodywork. These were caused from the medium abrasives within the medium compound and due to the Ford paint not being overly hard, these are due to be removed in the first polishing stage which is where the next episode is going to continue. I'm incredibly happy that all compounding work is now being finished and that the car is starting to look awesome once again. As always, thank you for watching, please stay tuned for the following episodes to this series, drop the video a like to show a bit of support and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.